Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about what is a citizen? And with that, what are the rights and responsibilities of citizenship? Okay, a citizen is a person who basically owns loyalty to a particular nation. Right? So they owe loyalty to a nation, and these people are entitled to all its rights and protections and privileges of being a citizen of a country. Right? So all the rights and protections and privileges of, uh, of that country. Okay, so now, who is a citizen of the United States? Well, there's one of three ways that you can become a citizen. So, first, that you were born in the United States. Sweet. That's the easiest one. If you happen to be lucky enough to be born in this great country, then you are a citizen. Yay! Or, number two, you were naturalized. Which means you are born in another country, and you completed all the... Uh, legal hoops, all the rigmarole to become a citizen. All right, And finally, if you were brought into this country but you're under the age of 18 and your parents go through the naturalized process, you automatically become a citizen if you're 18 or younger. So if your parents came here from Germany or uh, Mexico or wherever and they go through the naturalization process, you, by default, become a citizen as soon as they do, as long as you're under 18, 18 or younger. All right, here's some terms that you probably hear a lot about in the news. An immigrant. An immigrant is a person who basically has lived in another country and, come, and has come to our country in order to settle here. All right, so uh, many of our great-great-grandparents and uh, relatives from uh, generations ago Millions of them came to America seeking the opportunity, the blessings of liberty that America offered. If you've ever been to Ellis Island, New York, it's a great museum. talks about all the immigrants who came to the United States. So throughout our history, millions and millions of immigrants have become naturalized citizens. All right? So what happens is these people, they come in. Do they become a citizen right away? Boom. No. Do they, um, you know, have to wait a week or so? No, it's actually quite a lengthy process. First of all, you'll hear of aliens, and you'll hear of resident aliens. Resident aliens are not in citizens who have received permission to remain in the country. You may have heard the term green card. They actually have a, a card that allows them to be in this country uh, legally, and they are not citizens yet. All right? Now, oftentimes these people might come here... Uh, Maybe to work. Maybe a company, maybe Japan or Canada has sent a citizen here to the United States. They really don't have intentions of living here or becoming a citizen, but maybe their job is sent there. So they'll come either on a visa or some other uh, way. But we're, what we're talking about today are resident aliens, people who are coming here in order to seek citizenship. All right. Now, in order for a resident alien to become a citizen, they must do the following. They have to have a five-year waiting period. Five years they have to wait. All right, five years. They then are going to take a test to take uh, to look at their ability to speak and understand English. They also need to take a test on American history and government. Remember that test I gave you guys at the beginning of uh, this section? All right, that's a sample test of the uh, citizenship test. They have to demonstrate good moral character. So in this past five years that they've been living in the United States... Uh, we want to make sure that they're not out robbing banks or drinking and driving or uh, things that we do not consider to be a good trait. All right? They then have to complete an interview process and explain why they want to become a U.S. citizen. And then finally, after they've passed the test, they've completed the interview, they've demonstrated good moral character, they will stand in front of a judge and take an oath of allegiance to the United States of America. And they are going to have exactly... The same uh, privileges, rights and privileges of every natural born citizen. Every one of them. Except one. They can never become the president. Mm -mm. All right? Presidents, if you remember, they have to be naturally born. So other than that, though, these people that come to the country, they go through this whole process, are going to have the same rights and privileges of every natural born citizen. Except for becoming president. Okay, so let's talk about civic virtues and democratic values. Now, if you remember back in the lesson, we talked about the Constitution 
where our founding fathers got some of the ideas behind the Constitution, you remember that they looked at Rome, Rome's Republic. <clears throat> and what they really admired about Rome's Republic was civic virtue. Sir, civic virtue is the willingness to work for the good of the nation or country, even at great sacrifice. They looked at people like Cincinnatus, who left his comfortable life on the farm to take on the pressure of politics, right? Now, today what we're looking for are people who are willing to, to do what's necessary to make our country good. Um, a lot of people will have this idea that I'm going to go serve on a city council or a school board or, you know, something like that to try to improve my community. That's what we're looking for. I would argue, again, I've, I've said this before, I don't think our founding fathers were looking for career politicians, people who decide, you know something, I'm my whole adult life I'm going to be a politician. I think oftentimes you become more interested in what's good for me politically than what's good for my country or community. So, uh, again, that's kind of my opinion. I just want to make sure you understand that. But we do need people who are willing to work for our state and local government as well as the federal government. Also, in the military or the National Park Service or any of the numerous jobs that benefit our country. All right? Going along with that is a key democratic value of patriotism. Yay. We love patriotism. Okay? And what is patriotism? It's a feeling of love and devotion towards one's country. Now, this love and devotion has inspired many people to serve in the military at great sacrifice. You know, many have people have laid down their lives or uh, have you know, been seriously injured, you know, defending our country in the military. But also, you know, you could look at uh, joining maybe the Peace Corps or... Um, the the uh, maybe not necessarily the military about the um, state department where you become a uh, an ambassador you know spreading america's ideas with other countries okay so there's lots of ways to show patriotism without necessarily having to go into the military all right and kind of going on with the military and patriotism we talk about courage and a lot of people think of courage as physical courage the kind of courage that soldiers and police and firefighters have. And obviously that is very important, but also moral courage. People like George Washington, when all the odds were stacked against him, many people had probably counseled him to give up the fight. He doesn't. You know, or, or Susan B. Anthony, who fought for the women's right movement, even though it was very unpopular at the time. Um, you know, she did the right thing. She was on the right side of history. And going along with that is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who also um, looked at non-violent protest. Uh, I believe he did it the right way to try to uh, bring equal rights to, to minorities. So along with physical courage, you need to have moral courage, doing what you know is right, the right thing to do. Even if it's not popular, it's the right thing to do. Okay, so what exactly are the responsibilities of a citizen? All right, so here... They are. All right, let's talk, start at the top. Voting. Now, as you remember, our government is a republic, and a republic is a government where the citizens govern themselves through elected representatives. Now, for a republic to work, the people must vote. They must uh, you know, study the candidates and issues uh, in order to be, uh, make, pick responsible people who are going to make decisions on our behalf. So voting is a responsibility of all citizens and it, it is kind of heartbreaking i you know listen to the news or read the paper and after a major election you might get maybe 50 52 55 maybe on a great turnout 60 percent of eligible voters that voted i mean that's kind of sad that it, that is sad um the apathy and the uh you know i don't know just the Unwillingness to do your part, I, I think, is disheartening sometimes. And what also gets me is the people that um, that complain about the government. And oftentimes I've talked to people, adults, who complain about the government, and I ask them if they voted, and they said, ah, no, I didn't even bother. Well, th then you really shouldn't complain. If you don't have enough, um, if you don't take the responsibility to vote, then I don't think you should have the right to complain. I mean, really, if you think about it. All right? So that's voting. So every... Responsible citizen should vote. 
The second responsibility is obeying the laws. Remember, the preamble says, we, the people of the United States. <clears throat> so we, the people, have given power to government to make, lo make laws for us through our elected representatives. So therefore, since we elect people to represent us and they make the laws, then we have the obligation in obeying the laws. Now, there are going to be some laws that you may not uh, completely agree with. It's still your responsibility to obey that law. And then think about a candidate who has your same point of view, and then you can maybe vote for that candidate. But until that time, we must obey the laws that the nation has set forth because we've elected representatives on our behalf, and they have made the laws for us. Okay, the next one is defending the nation. Now, we live right here in Bellevue, Nebraska, uh, the home of the of Offutt Air Force Base, the 55th um, Wing, along with Strategic Command, are all stationed are right here at Offutt Air Force Base. So many of your parents, including myself, you know, served defending the nation. Now, what a lot of people don't know, especially at your age, you know, you're 14, 15 years old, is that when you turn 18, all males, all boys, when they turn 18, have to register for the selective service. You must. It's a law. What they'll do is they'll keep this list, and if there was a time that America desperately needed people to defend the nation, you know, they would use that list to instill a draft or, or start a draft. Now, we haven't had a draft since the Vietnam War, so it's very unlikely we would. And a lot of, of men and women, when they turn 18 or 22, when they graduate college, will join the military voluntarily. You know, they, they, they love their country. That sense of patriotism is there. Uh, also, maybe it's opportunity. You know, they're looking for a way not only to defend the nation, but, uh, you know, to make a career. So defending the nation is also extremely important. And I think that most people, if they knew their country was desperately uh, threatened, I, I feel that they would volunteer to defend the nation. I do. Okay? So hopefully that doesn't change, at least in my lifetime. All right? So defending the nation is one of the responsibilities of a citizen. Okay, so the next one is serving on a jury. Remember that the uh, Constitution, the Bill of Rights, guarantees trial by jury. And the jury will be a jury of your peers, people like you. So it's very important that you serve when called on a jury. Now, you'll have to take time off work. You know, um, uh, it kind of, can be kind of a, a hassle. But it's important for our system of justice to work that members of the community serve on a jury. All right, so that's important also to be a good citizen. The next responsibility is serving the community. And you know what I find uh, amazing about middle school students is that a lot of them really get this one. A lot of my students, um, they do walkathons or they raise money for the homeless or the food pantry or they, they work in their church. I see serving the community, at least in the middle school level, um, is a thing that the middle school kids really understand. What I don't see is that translate well to adulthood. Uh, people get busy with their lives, you know, their own problems and concerns. But being a responsible citizen means serving the community. That might be ringing the kettle for the Salvation Army, ringing the bell for the kettle, the Salvation Army during Christmas. Or it might be donating money to the food bank. Or, I mean, believe me, there are many, many, many ways to serve the community. Can you imagine how great our community was if every single person did something for their community? Um, I think we'd need a, a lot less federal government mandates if every person took the responsibility on themselves to help those in need to serve the community. That would be great. So um, remember when you get older, serve your community. Find something that you have a passion for and, and do it. All right, and finally, the last one is being informed. Um, again, I harp on this a lot in my class. You know, my, you students are going to be voting within the next probably four years. As soon as you turn 18, you can legally vote. But having that right to vote, which is critical, it's important. Remember, up here, voting is a very important responsibility. But I think going right on with that is being informed. Okay. Getting to know the issues, getting to know the candidates, what they stand for. Not listening to the political rhetoric or the propaganda, necessarily, but really staying informed. Voting for the candidate who best um, 
you know, supports your ideas and your principles. So staying informed is important. Not being swayed by popularity or who's got the glitziest commercial. Really digging down, really finding out where the candidates stay. Uh, and, and not only just for the candidates, but also issues. You know, uh, rules that the state or local government is beginning to uh, is think about passing. So staying informed on those things is very important. So there you have it. Those are responsibilities of being a citizen. So to be a good citizen of our country, you need to vote. You need to obey the laws. Any time of need, you need to defend the nation. You need to serve on a jury when called. You should find something in your community uh, to support. And you must be informed. If you could do all those things, those six things, you would be a responsible citizen. Yay, America. All right, there you have it.